If you are a cybersecurity auditor who loves Excel sheets and loves the idea of having a checklist, then this is not the video for you. I was your only friend. In the AWS world, you require a new approach. In fact, in the public cloud world, you need to require a new approach of auditing your cloud environment in a much more smarter way. In this video, we'll talk about auditing your AWS account so you can be the next generation of the cloud security auditor. Now, wait, 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 wait. Before you even start changing the video and thinking, oh, I have seen a lot of audit videos and the checklist has not changed for a long time. Yes, you are right. AWS, along with other public cloud providers, do give you a compliance report for their services that you can export and use that as a way to, say, tick box your checklist and say, yep, yeah, this is compliant, or at least this particular service is compliant. Now, as a next generation of cloud security, which is what you would be towards the end of this video, I do want to call out there are certain terminologies that you should be aware of if you have not worked in the cloud space before. Now, if you have, you probably still work by listening to it the same way you listen to the air hostess talk about the safety instructions, even though you have heard about it a hundred times, this is the same for you because it cannot be said enough. Shared responsibility model. The first thing I would mention over here in terms of compliance in any cloud environment, whether it's AWS or not, is to understand the shared responsibility model. Shared responsibility model means who is accountable for this particular service. Basically, if something goes wrong, who am I calling for fixing this or who am I calling to, to hold me when there's a panic moment? Everybody stay calm. What's the Everybody procedure, everyone? Calm. What's the procedure? Stay a real life example of a shared responsibility model is the car rental company. Now you, as someone who's hiring a car from a car rental company, you would go ahead, give your credentials and make sure everything checks and balances are ticking off and you get the car. Now it's the responsibility of the rental company to give you a car that is functional, AKA certified to all the industry standards so that your car does not break down in the middle of the road somewhere. Now, it's your responsibility to make sure that anything that you do with the car is within the legal boundary and you're not, say, jumping red lights or going across, uh, getting fines for parking or whatever else may be, because they would find you and they would make you pay for it. Now, that is your responsibility. This is the same in the cloud context as well. And AWS, which is a service provider or your car rental company, is deciding the fact that, hey, we're gonna give you all these services, 400 plus services for you to use, Mr. Customer. Please go ahead and use them responsibly. Take some responsibility. And now you as a customer are gonna consume these services basically with the understanding that any data that you put in or any kind of compute that you manage or any kind of services, which is primarily under your control is your responsibility. My precious. <laughs> The same way, if you are trying to test for compliance in cloud, if you are using a service which is provided by Amazon, the compliance of that service is responsibility of Amazon, but everything that you've put in inside it and the controls that you have put around it or anything that you're doing around it, which is created by you, is your responsibility. So compliance for that, and as a next generation cloud security auditor, I can tell you, I'm auditing your folks. Are you all ready for this? Are you ready? I'm ready. Now, just in case if you're one of those auditors who has been auditing companies for a long time and is used to the idea of data centers, you would have probably seen this already in the context of a lot of people who used to have their own data data centers or on-premise services they started giving it to external people this is pretty much the same thing now your data centers instead of being managed by a external party which is aka used to be an ex company now the same company is amazon same way they had to do audits same way amazon has to do audit but as a customer we are still responsible for holding compliance standards using services that are compliant to the standards that we need to adhere to now because you're the next generation of cloud security auditor and this is the compliance video i should tell you the smart way of doing compliance in cloud trust me I'm like a smart person. The smart way of doing compliance in cloud is by using cloud native services that are provided by the cloud provider themselves to help solve your problem. That is what makes the next generation of cloud security auditor and that's you. I can know it, I can feel it, but you need to know a few things before you get into it. Now, apart from using cloud native services, there is help available. You can also use the cloud adoption framework that has been provided by Amazon Web Services themselves, which talks about different capabilities that can help you get compliant. Now, I'm not gonna focus on all the compliance categories, but I'm gonna get take a few, build on this later in the next later video as well. So in this particular video, we'll talk about a few services that you need to think about. For example, the first one I would call out is AWS Identity and Compliance. Now, this is a collective service name. Within that, you would have the identity access management part of AWS. You would also have the single sign-on part, 
also known as the AWS Identity Center now, which is a new terminology. You would also have something called the IAM Access Analyzer, which helps you ensure decisions are being made for permissions in the least privileged way possible. With like your S3 bucket has overtly permissive permissions, it would tell you that, hey, you should probably look into this. Now, that is just one example, but now there are a lot of these services which you can use for your own advantage. Now, the first one I'll probably use is AWS Artifact. Now, I know I did say you do not need to have a checklist, but AWS Artifact gives you a report, which I was talking about, which if you have access to an AWS account, you can export the popular cybersecurity standards that AWS services are compliant to, and this is the export you can do for free. For and you can at least get the copy of the compliance standard from the Amazon. Now, since you understand, okay, so I have a framework called Cyber. Now I have a framework called Cloud Adoption Framework. I also know what to do with identity access management. Now what? The next thing, and probably the most important thing you want to do now is get an inventory of what resources are being used in AWS because that's how you would match to, okay, what standards should this be applicable for? What standards is the business responsible for? What standard have I been brought into test against? This is where you start matching the answers to that question to the resources and services in use by that particular customer that you're auditing. Now, since we are at that stage where we have got identity, we have a framework, we know that we need to get inventories. There is a cloud native answer for this as well. AWS Resource Group is a way of grouping services that are tagged in a certain way, which you can use to filter and export that as a CSV to have an understanding of what resources are tagged and what resources are not tagged and what resources are even supported for tagging because not all services within AWS support tagging. You never know if you don't have any tagging. Now, and talking about tagging, tagging is simply like a label that you put on, you know how in pantry you have a lot of stuff. You have coffee, you have sugar, you have salt. You put a label on it. Tagging is the same concept in the AWS context. Every resource, well, most resources can be tagged and that can be collectively viewed in a resource group. There's another service you should know about when you are trying to build inventory, which is called AWS Config. AWS Config has the capability to record the inventory of all the resources that are currently in use. It also collects the tagging information as well. So two services, two cloud native services you should definitely be aware of for collecting your inventory. Now, obviously you can use both the console or the browser version, or you can use an automated version of doing this because trust me, no one is using only one AWS account at the moment. They are all using multiple AWS accounts. So you might have to think about ways of scaling this across multiple. Nowadays, a large company can have up to three, 400 AWS accounts. Wow. Resource group and config as well as uh, tagging across 300 accounts. There is no physical way you can do that in that four week window that you get. So you need to get sharper and the next generation of cloud security orders are not trying to use scripts to make sure that they can collect all the information that required for all the inventories from all the AWS accounts that the customer has. The next cloud native service I think you should be aware of is called the AWS Trusted Advisor. AWS Trusted Advisor has six core security services that you can check against. It would check things like, oh, if your identity and access management user has MFA in there or not, if, or also check against certain other standards as well, which you want to look at. Now, these are just some of the services that you can use and are cloud native to help you in your audit. And I can list out a lot more, but that would be in another video because this is getting a really long video. I just want to make sure you have a good starting point to start your audit and don't worry, it is not a hard process. You can get through it. But you might wonder, hey, Ashish, why are you finishing the video? But we had all these other catalogs of categories that you mentioned in the cloud adoption framework. Well, about two or three of them, like for example, application security, vulnerability management, some of these could actually be resolved by the sponsor of this video. The sponsor of this video is Sneak, and I'm going to leave a cheat sheet for how you can use them for compliance against some of those categories that are mentioned by the cloud adoption framework. If you have a question about more services that you want to know about that are cloud native and can help you accelerate your audit because you are the next generation of cloud security auditor, definitely drop that as a comment. If this was really valuable, please share this with the auditor that you know, because they definitely need to become the next generation of auditor. And while you're there, if you enjoy content about cloud security, we create content on cloud security on a daily, weekly, monthly, every day, basically. So feel free to subscribe and follow us on LinkedIn, YouTube, and all our socials that I'll leave a link for us here. And I'll see all of you next generation of cloud security auditors in the next video. Peace.